So as we were reading, the most typical of these categories, Gramsci had already begin began his uh, categorization about the intellectuals. So Bolache, he has already said in the previous paragraph that categories of intellectuals already in existence. The most typical of these categories who are already in existence, मैंने ज़ादेर के अबार वही जो organically तोड़ी करते हो बे ना जेटा political party जेटा बोल चाहे that you need to that a revolutionary class that the working classes they need to create the organic intellectuals from among them. But here Gramsci presents to us a different category of intellectuals, the intellectuals who have already been existing. One of those, he says, the most typical of these categories of the intellectuals is that of the ecclesiastics, who for a long time, for a whole phase, uh, uh, for a whole phase of history, which is partly characterized by this very monopoly, held a monopoly of a number of important services, religious ideology. I explained this in the last class. That is the philosophy and science of the age, together with schools, education, morality, justice, charity, good works, etc. The category of ecclesiastics can be considered the category of intellectuals organically bound to the landed aristocracy. It can I am saying it had equal status juridically with the aristocracy with which it shared the exercise of feudal ownership of land and the use of state privileges connected with property. But the monopoly held by the ecclesiastics in the superstructural field was not exercised without a struggle or without limitations. And hence, there took place the birth in various, in various forms to be gone into and studied concretely of other categories favored and enabled to expand by the growing strength of the central power of the monarch right up to absolutism. So, so Gramsci is saying that the ecclesiastics who held some solid monopoly over the superstructural field that is the world of the culture. Culture ki rokum bhabe religion generate kore this I have already discussed that is that was a part of the explanation of religious ideology so the ecclesiastics they had a monopoly over the superstructural field but Gramsci says that this was not without any conflict and it was it was not that the ecclesiastics uh, had monopoly over the uh, over the superstructural field over the world of production without any struggle without any conflict or without any challenges there were challenges which Gramsci says uh, that as a result of this challenge, as a result of the conflict that existed between the class of the ecclesiastics and the other rising classes was in various forms favored and enabled to expand the growing strength of the monarch. So the other classes who were challenging the ecclesiastics, they were more or less supported by the kings and the queens, by the monarchy. Because the ecclesiastics, they belong to the sphere of religion, the church. And the monarch and his supporters, they belong to the sphere of royalty. So th these are very, these are the two heads of the same coin. Because uh, at that point of time, it was thought that the king was supposed to be a messenger from God. That he had the divine right to rule. I, I hope I think you have heard of this phrase the divine right to rule that the king used to have it was thought so in back in the 17th century back in the 16th century uh, not, uh, not of, um, back in the 18th century yes somewhat into the 18th century but but in the 18th century already the restoration and all of those things that had begun so it was ending the rule of monarchy was towards its end because of larger and larger conflicts as time moved on but before that if we if we, if we start uh, other our reading of history of literature from the 1300s we will find that there have been an app the divine right of divine right to rule uh, which was believed that the kings and the queens had the monarch had so as a result you can see that the other side of the coin that is the church 
this too they come in they come in very easy conflict because the church is also supposed to be a representative of god of course and the king also has the divine right to rule that also makes him a representative of god so there cannot be two representatives of god all right like it like in all if we, even if we forget about christianity we cannot have two prophets we cannot have two gods but then again you can say that since there are so many gods already in so many other religions then what about that yes of course that is there cannot but then again there are categories of people classes who people classes of people who worship only one god so there cannot be two kings there cannot be two gods there cannot be two lion in the jungle there has to be only one person whom the people whom the, whom the normal people follow this is something that i had all, also referred to uh, at the beginning of the essay i remember uh, i was giving the example of kim uh, rudyard kipling's kim which is also a post colonial text uh, we, we we do post colonial reading from that text so in a very similar manner like the british they also removed all the kings and monarchs or they reduced the monarchs to mere pawns and and, and just something to be used uh, by the british aristocrats so the, either the british would be there or the existing monarchs would be there both of them cannot be the kings or the rulers of a same people so in this case also the ecclesiastics and the supporters of the monarch or those who were supported by the monarch sponsored and patroned by the monarch they came into direct conflict and therefore there rose a certain category of people a certain class of intellectuals called the nobilis de robe as you can see over here the nobilis de robe so who are the nobilis de robe very briefly put you will understand why they are uh, if after explanation you will understand why they were a direct conflict a direct challenge to the ecclesiastics see the nobilis de robe they were of course nobilis de robe directly translates into nobles of the robe okay wait let me write it over here nobles of the robe i hope you can see what i am writing kyun na dekhte pehle amake bolbe yes <clears throat> so they were nobilis de robe they translates into nobles of the robe so the nobles of the robe they were actually essentially they were french aristocrats okay they were the class of aristocrats that is estates uh, land owners basically whose rank and the, uh, the the rank of the nobles of the robe it came from holding a very high position in the judiciary or in the administrative posts that is directly related to the office of the king not to the church the judiciary is something that are governed by the ministers of the king the administrative posts they are also Uh, the ministers who are did in direct contact with the king so the church does not have anything to do over here one moment okay i'm not accepting anyone else khub introduction hote um okay so mm, yes so they, they were the aristocrats and they were they got their rank they got their rank from holding certain judicial or administrative posts and as a rule the positions these positions that is the designations that they that they held they did not give give themselves they give give themselves the hold the title of nobility such as a baron or a viscount but they were almost always attached to a specific function that is that the nobles de robe or the nobles of the robe these this class of this category of intellectuals this category of people this class of people they got their rank that is they were called the nobles quote unquote nobles because of the functions that they had that is the function of an administrative of an administrator the function of a, of a judge perhaps of a lawyer perhaps so this function it gave give gave them their nobility but they were not 
the nobles such as the ecclesiastics like the baron like a baron is a class of ecclesiastic like a viscount v i s c o u n t proper pronunciation viscount hai like a viscount is not uh, is, is is someone who who is related to the church and gets his position and title that is the noble the title of the noble from that association that is association with the church but here the nobles of the robe they all got their they become the they they belonged or they they were added to the class of nobility only because of the position that they held uh, in 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 the judiciary or as administrative administrators etc etc because of the high ranking jobs that they held that gave them the title of nobility rather than the nobility which was begotten which one got as a result of uh, an inheritance that is your father was a baron so you become the son of a baron and also a baron so your nobility your class is an inheritance whereas the nobles of the robe their class was a function that is their class was defined by the jobs or the work that they held and it was not something that they got as a result of inheritance ab ab to to have you understood up till now many nobles of the robe why am i saying that their nobility they got as a result of their rank and the ecclesiastics who got their nobility as a result of inheritance from for generations to generations the inheritance is passed on the nobility the estates they are passed on and the son and thus and and, the, and his son and his son also becomes a noble as a result of the original ecclesiastic inheritance whereas the noble of the robe that was Uh, a, a, a nobility which ar- arose as a uh, as a result of the jobs that uh, that one did uh, job of a judiciary job of a judge perhaps of a high ranking administrator like that so uh, up till now i hope it is clear karu na thakle just stop me and ask me so what was the conflict then that existed over there what was the conflict then that existed corruption corruption ruke gelo ei class tar moddhe the corruption that existed within the church that is as i said that the church that was uh, you know the ecclesiastics this this they started selling uh, ab- absolution that is ami mone hoy ami bolechilam eta mane in in the religion if there is a process called the, the tradition of the eucharist that is if you confess then it is believed if you confess to to of uh, to a priest then the priest has the power or the priest has the means to absolve you or to remove your sins that is you become sin free if you confess that is a rule so what the what the uh, these officials the priests they started selling this power that is if you had money and if you gave it to the priest then the priest will accept your confession and it will absolve you he will absolve you of all your sins and if you do not have a money then you will die a sinner so now in the 21st century with rational minds and educated minds we know that this is not something that is very much logical and very much rational okay but at that point of time belief and faith was a very big deal a uh, faith in the christian uh, tradition faith in the christian myth Uh, there were there were there was blind faith because the church used to rule the society and here we see that there is a new class rising up against the officials of the church so the conflict existed because of the very fact that the nobles of the robe this nobility this nobility was not hereditary so if i am a noble of the robe of the 17th century france or of the 18th century france then my son will not have the same position which the ecclesiastics and their sons and their sons have are enjoying for the past century perhaps for past de- for past few decades perhaps but i as a noble of the robe i do not have the right to transfer my function or my office to my son to my son daughter ekta ekhane prashno hoy nei to my son so what happened was that these offices that is suppose uh, an office in the uh, in in the 
land administration suppose there is an office of uh, of the um, of a lawyer open or of a judge open so what the king started to do what the king started to do was that the king started selling this offices so if you are coming up to the king with a lot of money then the king will sell this office to you and this office this function is also a very rich office that is you get a lot of uh, you get paid a lot of money for this work for administrative works it aaj ke din ho shotti mane any administrative position pays a lot as a lot of as a as a high paying salary it is a high pay uh, high paying job so tokhon o shetai hoto administrative offices they were highly paying and highly fruitful jobs so this class of people they they started to get rich and as a result they were able to hold these offices for generations because if you are rich then your your son will also inherit your money and as a by product you inherit the office that your father held because you have bought that office from the king and when the king it also happened that when when there was less money in the treasury of the king suppose rajar kache paisa khub kom ache juddho uddho hocche civil unrest hocche church church oppose korche onek onek jaygay so the the king needs gold the king needs money so the king would start opening vacancies at huge amounts so that huge number of people start applying for the jobs and lot of money is raised because of the money that these people bring with them so this is basically ajke dine sarkari chakri thik ache tomar kache 4 lakh taka thakbe 6 lakh taka thakbe tumi ekta police chakri te dhuke jete parbe tarpore tarpore ghushke khe ghushke khe jodi banabe bariye bariye tarpore tomar je chhele hobe takeo trading e dhukiye debe abar she o rokom bhabe dhuke jabe chhele jodi ar ekto porashona bhalo hoy iq bhalo hoy tahole uchu uchu level e dhuke jabe তারপরে আবার ঘুষ খাবে ঘুষ খাবে খেয়েছে আবার তোমার ছেলে যেটা হবে সেও আবার পুলিশের চাকরিতে ঢুকে যাবে সো দিস ইজ বেসিক্যালি গভর্নমেন্ট জব দিস ইজ দিস ইজ সামথিং দ্যাট ইজ ভেরি র্যান্ডম দিস এক্সিস্ট দিস ইজ আ ফ্যাক্ট হোয়াট আই জাস্ট সেড এটা আমি নিজের থেকে বানিয়ে বলছি না দিস ইজ এ ফ্যাক্ট ইট অ্যাকচুয়ালি ডাজ হ্যাপেন ল্যাক্স অ্যান্ড ল্যাক্স অ্যান্ড রুপিজ আর টেকেন বাই হাই অ্যাডমিনিস্ট্রেটিভ অফিসিয়ালস টু গিভ ইউ জবস ওকে ইফ ইউ হ্যাভ দ্য মানি দেন ইউ উইল গেট ইট দোজ অফ আস হু ডোন্ট we do it the right way and that is why it takes time for us uh, so nonetheless tokhono eta hocchilo nothing much has changed in 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 the sector of uh, in the in the class struggle as we can see it still exists aro beshi consciously ekhon tokhon theke beshi aro beshi conscious so yes here this is something that i want to say so uh, this noble the, the noble of the ro- uh, robe as i was saying as hereditary offices you know they they because these people they were also educated people okay they were not uh, they were not uneducated or illiterate people they had they had they often had university education and they were the noble of the robe is also uh, one way of addressing to the robes or gowns that scholars still wear so a uh, noble of the robe oi jonno bola hoy karon gown ta je robe ta jeta ar ki scholars ra ekhono pore ar tokhono porto so originally as originally at the very beginning this noble the robe was given by the king to the to the to the scholar perhaps or or, or to any one person perhaps and uh, because it is given by the king it become he becomes a so called nobility but this nobility was not hereditary as i said which was in the case of case of ecclesiastics uh but originally they were given as rewards by the king but the offices they slowly became up for sale as i said they were they were slowly eventually they were sold a commodity to be bought and sold and this practice it became official how did it become official the king the king started a tax the tax was called i'm writing it down in the chat box the tax was called pollet so what was this tax this was an official tax that one had to pay in order to keep the office of the noblesse de robe that is an administrative office and this was an official law uh, uh, released by the king 
and as a result these offices also became a commodity so if you can continue paying the tax which was very high at that point of time uh, then you will continue to be a nobility and the conflict that existed between uh, the 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 you know the nobles of the sword there was another uh, there was another nobility when the class who was against the nobles of the road were the nobles of the sword এগুলো সব কটা ক্যাপিটালে থাকবে ঠিক আছে আমি ক্যাপিটালে লিখছি না সো নোবেলস অফ দি সোর্ড সো দিজ আর দ্য টু ক্লাসেস দ্যাট আর ইন কনফ্লিক্ট সোর্ড কেন বলা হচ্ছে একটু বুদ্ধি করে ভাবলেই বুঝতে পারবে সোর্ড বলা হচ্ছে টু দ্য পিপল হু গট দেয়ার নোবিলিটি অ্যাজ এ রেজাল্ট অফ দেয়ার কন্ট্রিবিউশন টু দি কান্ট্রি দ্যাট ইজ দে ওয়ার নাইটস দে ওয়ার হাই র্যাঙ্কিং সোলজার্স দে ওয়ার হাই র্যাঙ্কিং আর্মি অফিসিয়ালস সো দে ওয়ার কলড নোবেলস অফ দি সোর্ড and the nobles of the sword they disliked the nobles of the robe because of a very common psychological reason that the nobles of the robe they were actually commoners right they were common people they were not knights and they were not uh, ministers uh, ministers of the king they were not high ranking army officials they were commoners they were common people whereas the nobles of the sword they had the right to nobility because they have held this noble positions the position of the nobility for years and years and years for generations they had the right to nobility whereas the nobles of the robe were co- the commoners and the nobles of the sword they called the nobles of the robe soap like shaban bole dakto kan soap bolto because these this people nobles of the sword the the who had the right to nobility the generational noble they thought that through the offices through the administrative offices the nobles of the robe they tried to wash up away their commonness mane shaban diye sadharanata jeta seta ke arki dhuye felar chesta that is why they were referred to as soap so this is a derogatory this is an insult to the class so this is what the conflict uh, uh, that existed and how it came uh, how it rose also as a result of a challenge that the ecclesiastics were holding too much monopoly over a lot of spheres in the society and as a result the king thought to thwart the power or to pause put a pause to the power of the rising uh, class of ecclesiastics and it built a, the king built a class in its own favor which of course snowball effect বছরের পর বছর ধরে ইট বিকেম ইন ইটস ওন স্ট্যান্ডিং আ ক্লাস অফ ইন্টেলেকচুয়ালস উইথ ইটস ওন প্রিভিলেজেস অ্যাজ গ্রামসি রাইটস আ স্ট্র্যাটম অফ অ্যাডমিনিস্ট্রেটরস স্কলার্স সায়েন্টিস্টস থিওরিস্টস নন এক্লেসিয়াস্টিক্যাল ফিলোজফার্স এটসেট্রা দে ওয়ার নাথিং বাট দি ক্লাস অফ এলিটস অ্যাজ আই হ্যাড অফেন স্পোকেন অ্যাবাউট দ্য ক্লাস অফ এলিট এখান থেকেই উঠছে এলিটসরা কারা আমি যখন এলিটসের উপরে এলিট থিয়ারির উপরে ক্লাস দিচ্ছিলাম আমি একবারও বলিনি যে তারা রাজা রানীদের ছেলে দে দে হ্যাভ অলওয়েজ বিন কমনার্স কমন পিপল হু হ্যাভ হেল্ড হাই র্যাঙ্কিং অ্যাডমিনিস্ট্রেটিভ অফিসেস স্কলার্স ইউরো থিওরিস্ট সায়েন্টিস্ট দে আর দি ক্লাস অফ এলিট হু হোল্ড হু হোল্ড দেয়ার ক্লাসেস অর হু হোল্ড পাওয়ার অ্যাজ এ রেজাল্ট অফ দেয়ার ফাংশন Hmm, as a result of the function that they have which is also the definition of an intellectual so an elite also exists by function an intellectual also exists by function both of these and these are they are very opposing classes when intellectuals at least from the perspective of gramsci gramsci je intellectuals der ke niye bolche organic intellectuals er kotha jeta bolche that is completely in opposition to the class of to a class of elites but both of these classes exist as a result of the function that they have played or they continue to play in the society as a result of their contribution in various ways theek ache ebar ekta kharap ekta baje that is a that is a debate that is an ongoing debate which is of course also the central point of the 
war between the battle between capitalism and marxism or communism so apata to up till now is it clear does anyone have any question to ask me okay. so um, i will move on since these various categories of traditional intellectuals experience through ha ha bolo bolo जिज्ञेस कर ওখানে এলিট ক্লাসটা এলিট থিওরিটা কি ওদের ফাংশন হ্যান ত্যান সব কিছু আমি ওখানে এক্সপ্লেন করেছিলাম সো ইউ ওয়াচ দ্যাট তারপরে যদি কোনো সমস্যা থাকে দেন ইউ কাম টু মি অলরাইট ঠিক আছে ওকে সো আই এম কন্টিনিউইং সো সিন্স দিস ভেরিয়াস ক্যাটাগরিজ অফ ট্র্যাডিশনাল ইন্টেলেকচুয়ালস এক্সপেরিয়েন্স থ্রু অ্যান স্পিরিট দ্য কর্পস স্পিরিট মানে দ্য তোমার ওই দ্য স্পিরিট অফ দি spirit of the group okay the spirit of spirit as a class ar ki je take dhara hocche they 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 had a class consciousness eta kai hole class consciousness jeta ar ki tomar as the noble nobles of the robe as the heredit as the uh, function of the office or as the office they were sold continuously and it passed from father to son and to his son there was a growing class consciousness there was a growing class consciousness and um Uh, sorry so this is what the spirit the corpse is about and so gramsci is saying that experience since vid- since these various categories of traditional intellectuals experience through an spirit the corpse their uninterrupted historical continuity and their special qualification they thus put themselves forward as autonomous and independent of the dominant social group as i was also talking about the elite side orao ekta autonomous and independent group toiri hoye jay an autonomous and independent group that is actually in control of a lot of things but they are not the they are not exactly the capitalists or owners of production per se so if i am saying that nehru is an elite if i am saying that jawaharlal nehru is an elite something which i have something which if you uh, watch that class on the elites uh, you will understand why i am saying that so if i am calling nehru an elite then nehru was not an owner of production nehru did not belong to this dominant social group as you can see dominant social group mane ki pratham dike bolechilam two groups the owners of production and the workers okay there are there, these are the two, two groups the capitalists and the workers and so people who own and people who do not uh, are a elites ra if nehru is an elite nehru did not belong to any either of these categories yet yet he was someone who had a huge role to play in the superstructural field that is the world of the culture world of the his- history world of historical continuity okay and so that is why gramsci is saying that they put themselves these this group this group of elite they put themselves as for, uh, forward as autonomous and independent of the dominant social group and this is what this is what gramsci calls this is what gramsci calls just one moment this is what gramsci called expression of that social utopia sorry beke gelo expression of social utopia 
এক খুব একটা খুব দারুণ একটা ফ্রেজ আর কি এই সোশ্যাল ইউটোপিয়া কথাটা ইউটোপিয়া মানে আমরা জানি কি এনি ওয়ান নোজ দ্য মিনিং অফ ইউটোপিয়া ব্যবহার হয় ওখানে ইউটোপিয়া ইজ আ পারফেক্ট সোসাইটি অ্যাজ মুন সেট পারফেক্ট সোসাইটি যেখানে ক্রাইম নেই যেখানে ল নেই তার মানে ল লেস যে সেরকম না ক্রাইম যেহেতু নেই অ্যান্ড সিন্স ইট ইজ আ পারফেক্ট সোসাইটি আইন বলে কিছু দরকারই নেই ওকে সো দের ইজ প্রেজেন্স অফ লাভ দের ইজ নো ক্লাস দের আর নো ওয়ার্স দের আর নো ব্যাটলস এটসেট্রা এটসেট্রা ইটস ইটস অ্যান আইডিয়াল সোসাইটি পারফেক্টের থেকেও একটা বেটার ওয়ার্ড হবে অ্যান্ড আইডিয়াল সোসাইটি দ্য ওয়ে a society should be ideal nestor jeta ami jodi platonic ekta kotha bartte jodi boli something very ideal so here when gramsci mentions says that this is an expression of social utopia by which the intellectuals think of themselves an independent autonomous endowed with a character of their own etc so gramsci is saying that this feeling that the elites have that they are the elites or according to this essay the nobles of the robe they have the feeling that they have that they are independent and function uh, autonomously that is they are not linked to the base of a society but have an effect only in the superstructure of the society right to hocche they have an effect in the superstructural field but if they are not linked to any means of to a, to any of the dominant social groups that is the group that owns means of production and the group that expands the means as in the workers as in the supporters as in anyone who works in a factory or anyone who belongs to an industry which all of us are in some way or the other because amra to arki tax dicchi tai na amra tax dicchi amra 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 amader service dicchi amra amader labor dicchi and as a result the factories the industries they are growing they are making more products amra salesman hocchi they are selling more products they are bringing in more profits amra amra marketer marketers hocchi amra marketing kori amra advertisement makers hocchi they are selling more products they are bringing in more profits so this is something that adds to them what we do it adds to the cycle of capitalism it adds to the profit of capitalism all of our work all of our endeavors sob rokom bhabei ar amra bhabji ei ta holo duto social socially dominant class and the elites they are thinking that they have nothing to do with us but they have a lot of responsibility a lot of role to play in the superstructure that is our lives actually our lives that are embedded in the culture that is a part of the history everything amader kaj ekta jayga thake ar jibon ta ekta jayga thake amra bhabi je amader kaj ta amader jibon ke affect kore na but it actually does in a lot of ways in a lot of lot of ways mentally na holo psychologically na holo immediately na holo it affects our lives are centered around the work that we do amra ki kaj kori shei hisebe amader ke loke judge kore আমরা কি কাজ করি না বা করতে চাই সেই হিসেবে লোকে আমাদেরকে জাজ করে সো আওয়ার ওয়ার্ক ডিফাইন্স আস ইট ডিফাইন্স আস সেটা খারাপ সেটা ভালো সেটা সব দিক সব রকমেরই এফেক্ট আছে হুম বিকজ ইট গিভস রাইজ টু আ কনসিয়াসনেস অফ ক্লাস দ্যাট দ্যাট দিস থিং দ্যাট ইট এক্স অ্যান্ড দিস দিস কাইন্ড অফ আ প্রসেস ইট এক্সিস্ট ইন দিস ওয়ার্ল্ড মানে খারাপই এটা ভালো কিছুই নেই এতে যে আমরা কাজ দেখে লোককে জাজ করি but nonetheless it is there it is something that we also practice amra hoyto acknowledge korbo na ba amra hoyto consciously kore thaki na but nonetheless amra kore thaki but here they are there are the elites who think that they have nothing to do with any of the capitalists with any of the communists but they have a huge role to play in the super structural field that is they are huge influencers they are movers of people they move people they influence people they sway people i remember using this term in that class of elite theory that they use their influence to sway 
sway people to their sides hmm like this so ei je tumi thoro rahul gandhi rahul gandhi does not belong does not own any industry rahul gandhi does not belong to the working class kintu rahul gandhi ke oi hatras jawar shomoy okhane jawar shomoy dhakka mere phele dewa hoyeche derek obrain ke phele dewa hoyeche tumi bhabo derek obrain is an intellectual by function rahul gandhi is an intellectual by function so these people এদেরকে ধাক্কা মেরে ফেলে দিয়েছে আর সেটা ছবিতে তোমার ফেসবুকে ইউটিউবে প্রচার হয়ে গেছে নিউজ পেপারে প্রচার হয়ে গেছে সো নাও দের আর সাব হিউজ গ্রুপস অফ সাপোর্টার্স দ্যাট দিস টু পিপল হ্যাভ দ্যাট দিস টু পিপল হ্যাভ অ্যাজ আ রেজাল্ট অফ দি পলিটিক্যাল পার্টি দ্যাট দে রিপ্রেজেন্ট অ্যান্ড দি ইভেন্টস দ্যাট টুক প্লেস আফটার দে ওয়ার পুস্ট ডাউন তারপরে কি হলো তারপরে কি হলো সো দিস আর দি এলিটস হু ইউজ দে হু হ্যাভ হিউজ ইনফ্লুয়েন্স ওভার আস আসি বলছি আমি দ্য কমন পিপল আমি বলছি ইয়েট দে হ্যাভ নাথিং টু ডু উইথ আস ইয়েট দে হ্যাভ নাথিং টু দে ডু নট ব্রেক ব্রেড উইথ আস দে ডু নট আস কাজ দ্যাট হাউ মাচ উই আর আর্নিং অর দে ডু নট হেল্প টু ইম্প্রুভ আওয়ার ওয়ার্কিং কন্ডিশনস অর দে ডু নট দে উইল নেভার সে দ্যাট দে সাপোর্ট আ পার্টিকুলার বিজনেসম্যান অর they do not support a particular businessman dharo amader kendriya sarkar reliance ke support kore kintu kono din samne eshe bolbe okay so they will never they, they will never say that but dharo reliance is a supporter of the central uh, governing political party that we have but but will reliance ever say that no Na, but they do there exists a mutual support and as a result imagine the influence that the political class that the current ruling political class has over the population of india in which every other person uses the telecommunication line owned by reliance amar kacheo ache ekta jio sim and i i mean i think if, uh, most of you have so we do use it and that that industry is supported by a political elite class so gramshi is now saying that these elites they think that they only have a an an influence or an effect in the superstructural field but they are separate or autonomous from the so uh, from the dominant social groups this thinking this kind of thinking gramshi says is an expression of social utopia this is an idealistic thinking that they have and this does not exist it is it can never happen that the nobles of the robe or the class of elite or the class of political elite they are independent they are autonomous they are endowed with a character of their own that is how they grow a class consciousness tai na mane dhoro are baba ami tor moto norom tor moton hat diye khete parbo na baba ei jo elitist chinta dhara thik ache ei jo elitist chinta dhara gulo tara bhabe je ami মানে তারা ভাবে যে তারা আমাদের মতন হতে পারবে না আমাদের সাথে মিশতে পারবে না আমাদের সাথে থাকতে পারবে না বা ধরো দে আর কমপ্লিটলি ইন্ডিপেন্ডেন্ট অফ আস দে থিঙ্ক যে আমরা বা দ্য ডমিনেন্ট সোশ্যাল গ্রুপস যারা হয় তারা এই এলিট ক্লাসকে ইনফ্লুয়েন্স করে না দ্যাট ইজ নট ট্রু দ্যাট ইজ নট ট্রু অ্যাট অল ইউ ক্যান ইমাজিন দ্য নাম্বার অফ ওয়েজ দ্যাট রিলায়েন্স অ্যাজ আ হিউজ টেলিকমিউনিকেশন কোম্পানি ওয়ান অফ দি লার্জেস্ট ইন ইন্ডিয়া অ্যান্ড ওয়ান অফ দি লার্জেস্ট ইন দ্য ওয়ার্ল্ড অ্যাজ ওয়েল will you be ever able to able to say that they do not have any influence in the political field in the in the in the, in the circle of the political elites who support them no that cannot be the case that can never be the case jodi ekjon there is always a mutual understanding that exists between classes so if any one particular class says that i am independent that i am not affected by what uh, uh, by what an industrialist does by what a working that by what a group of labor does by what a trade union does then that is a complete lie or that is an expression of social utopia that is a utopic society in which the elites they are enclosed within a circle which cannot be touched by anyone that is not the case they are also a part of this social exchange that they are also a part of this class struggle which exists in the world apadoto is it clear karo problem thakle then please come up okay so i will continue the most widespread error of method 
seems to me that of having looked for this criterion of distinction in the intrinsic nature of intellectual activities rather than in the ensemble of system of relations in which these activities and therefore the intellectual groups who personify them uh, have their place within the general complex of social relations. Just one moment. Yes. So, Gramsci is asking a question. In the paragraph at beginning, Gramsci has asked us a question that what is the what are the maximum limits of the acceptance of the term intellectual? Can one find a unitary criterion to characterize equally all the diverse and disparate activities of intellectuals and distinguish these at the same time and in an essential way from the activities of other social groupings? Mane intellectuals mane amra kader boli basically. How do we ca categorize people or how do we say that this group of people or this class is a class of intellectuals? Then Gramsci says that the most widespread error of method, and usually the method that we use to categorize a class as intellectuals, Gramsci says, is that the most widespread error is that of having looked for this criterion of distinction in the intrinsic nature of intellectual activities rather than in an ensemble of system of relations in which these activities have their place within a general complex. Again, on a borrow sentence, that the criteria for grouping a class of people as intellectuals should be the function that they have in the general, within the general complex of social relations rather than rather than looking for their intrinsic qualities man ami coffee house e gelam ami coffee house e gelam dekhlam je uh, ekta lok chashma pore eta mota dekhe uh, tolstoy er boi porche war and peace porche coffee er por coffee khacche ar patar por pata war and peace pore jacche he is thinking hard and uh, he looks very stressed out because war and peace is a very difficult text to read there is a, he is an intellectual intellectual we use it very loosely intellectual intellectual is also a slang that we use it comes from the italian word of an intellectual of intellect so, we have a derogatory way to say that we have a derogatory way to say that. What does that mean? That you. So, what does that mean? That we use, we use the, the word very loosely. Okay. Gramsci is saying that do not look for intrinsic qualities of a person. At the manusher mudde, that essential qualities ki ki ache, she parafuna, kotota bhalo, she koto shundor, kotha bolte pare, she kotota bochon kushal, she kotota bhalo likte pare, Tolstoy porche, kina Gramsci porche, Shakespeare porche, kina Eliot porche, Omotoshen porche, kina to marodike, Fuko porche, eshop deke, manakta manusha intrinsic nature, but choritro deke, taka intellectual bola jai, babola jaina, eta decide kole hobena. Amrataki intellectual pokoni bolbo. Jokun, he or she will have an intellectual function to play within the general complex of social relations. And that is why, that is why he will say in the next page, this very fine line that he uses, he says that all men are intellectuals, one could therefore say, but not all men have in the society the function of intellectuals so an intellectual is only by function so and that is why Gramsci also says that a journalist that a journalist and a teacher is one of the finest examples of a functionary intellectual Karan at a journalist his work involves his work a work of a journalist involves being actively present in the society there are criminal journalists, there are civil journalists, there are sports journalists actively involved within a society. Writing 
अबाउट इट दैट इज खाली जेने माथाय रेखे दिल एरक ना से लिखे अटारिंग फोर्थ दि ओपिनियन्स एंड दें इनफ्लुएन्सिंग अ लट अफ अदार पीपल वेन दे रीड वेन द पीपल रीड द पार्टिकुलर निज़ पेपर और द पार्टिकुलर आर्टिकल एटसेट्रा सिमिलर केस फर द टीचर अ टीचर रीड्स लर्नस एंड देन डिसपर्सेस डिस्ट्रीब्यूट्स दैट नलेज the process after which there will be other people who will have known who will have learned the same thing as a teacher therefore gramsci ki journalist er eder eder ei dutok class er example ta dicche therefore intellectual therefore he says that all men are intellectuals one could therefore say shobar intrinsic quality te intellect thaktei pare intellect is nothing intellect mane ki intellectual kotha re je amra use kori intellect mane holo decision making capability intellect is that capability in your mind which aids you to take decisions to take sound logical decisions to gramsci bolche all men are intellectuals one could therefore say one could say but not all men have in society the function of the intellectual that is you use that intellect in your work in order to transfer that intellect to others that is who true who are truly intellectuals according to gramsci and i'm not the formation of the intellectuals porchi for us also the intellect the we are also reading the formation of this type of intellectuals and of course gramsci categorizes or bolche mane elite intellectuals er kotha bolche oi nobles of the robe er kotha bolche hence then political class er kotha bolche so he is talking about various groups or various categories of intellectual he talks about traditional intellectuals organic intellectuals subalterns etc etc so uh, i will keep it till here today porer class e amar mone hoy porer class e i will finish it off i will try to finish it off okay so uh, karo kono proshno ache tahole please koro ami totokkhon attendance er eta khulchi if anyone has a question then please put it forward 